Yeah. So I'm asked quite often about coating things because obviously when you're laying down a coat and you want repeatability, what you need is some method of making sure that the film is the same thickness every time that you put it on. Now, a lot of the times we just want to do things quickly because we want a sense of stuff, in which case things like spray gunning it, uh, painting it on with a brush, um, using a roller, that sort of stuff, it's fine. I mean, the coat's pretty uneven, for sure, and you can be pretty much guaranteed that from one piece to the next piece, the coat is not going to be the same. But when you're just testing ideas and you're working through things and you're doing one or two bits of something, it, it really is a fine method. When you get closer to what it is that you want to do, what you want is some kind of repeatability, some way of making sure that that coat is the same thickness every time you apply it. Now, there are methodologies of doing this. Uh, you've got the Dr. Blade. But perhaps the most um, well-used, certainly in print, uh, and very often in photography for things like albumin coating or gelatin coating, that kind of thing, is to use what's called a drawdown bar. Now, the most popular drawdown bar is this, which is a Mayer rod. Now, the Mayer rod is really a stainless steel wrapped piece of steel. It's just, a, it's just a blank piece of rod, and they take a wire of a specific diameter and wind that wire all the way down, and what it does is create little cups that are of an even depth all the way. And there are standards for this, for standard wire thicknesses and standard rod diameters that you get for various Mayer bars. Now, the principle, really, is shown in this image. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So... What we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make a Mayer rod and then use that Mayer rod that we've made to do some drawdown. Now, if you don't feel like making a Mayer rod, then you can just use some of this stuff. This is threaded bar. Now, it has uh, little rounds in it, and obviously it's got a helix, so it will lift and create little spots, but it does do a good enough job if you don't feel like using a Mayer rod, and you can get this in different diameters. So I think this is an M8, uh, this one's an M12, and you can see I've used this quite often, actually. And they make pretty decent drawdown bars as well. Perhaps not the best, but still certainly pretty decent. The Mayer rods, like I say, are just a normal bit of steel. This is just mild steel wrapped with some stainless steel wire. This is a bit of stainless steel rod, incidentally, which lasts a little bit longer, and you make that. Now, the way to make this is like this. So to make a Mayer rod, actually, is really easy. What I've got here is a bit of bar. It's a one centimetre mild steel, and all I need to do is drill a hole in either end. I've put a flat spot on the bar, incidentally. It just makes it drilling it that much easier. The drill doesn't skip off the round surface. So we put that into a vise and into the drill, we can drill a couple of holes. Here's our bar and it's got holes drilled in it. And what I've got here is a bit of stainless steel. Now the only reason I'm using one centimetre bar on this stainless steel, which is 0.81 millimetres incidentally, uh, is because it's what I have lying around, to be honest. Um, you can use, or you should use, different gauges of stainless steel, because the different gauges of stainless steel will give you different thicknesses of film, and, and we'll go through that when we're actually sat at the desk, but to show you how to make the bar, the um, rod, you just feed the stainless steel in a couple of times through the hole that you've just done and pull it tight and that'll be enough to actually make a kind of knot in the end of the steel. Okay. And then twist that round a couple of times and then clip it off. Now obviously I've got a lathe here, and what we're going to do is wind a coil on the lathe. So the bar goes into the lathe, And you're going to progress it, because if you have it too far out, obviously the bar will bend as you pull on the wire, because you have to give it a fair pull to get that thing to work. I'll just remove the stock. And if I can remember which way around this lathe goes.
So it's turning in that direction. Pull your wire tight, give it a couple of turns by hand, just to get it going. And when you get close up to this, turn it off, move it up, feed it in, and that's all you do. So you've gone right to the end, your hole is right there incidentally. Put your thumb on it, snip off a fair length, and then you want to feed it through the hole at the other end. Once you've done that, that's your mayor rod made. Incidentally, you wind um, kiln coils in a similar way to this. Just get yourself a bar, wind the coil, pull it off, stretch it out, and it's exactly the same method for winding a kiln coil it is for making a mayor rod. But there's the mayor rod. Now let's get back to the desk and use it. So once you've made your mayor rod, you now have actually a very precise instrument for being able to do film thicknesses that are very, very repeatable time and time again. Those little hills that are formed sink down a little bit and the final finished coat thickness is related to the solid contents of your ink. So if you draw down a 100 micrometer thick film and you get a 40% solid content, what you're going to end up with is a 40 micrometer thick film time after time after time. So as long as you know the solid content of your ink, the diameter of the wire of your bar, then your film can be calculated really easily and will be consistent over the entire substrate. Now obviously when you're laying down a substrate what you need is a flat hard surface and here's a bit of tempered glass. That wasn't too expensive, actually it was a shelf, it's, it's a shelf from a cupboard that I got from um, the local DIY store. You get a bit of your substrate, just attach it to your shelf or your hard flat surface. Now I'm going to be using our ink incidentally. So I'm going to put a bit of gloves on just to stop my hands getting too dirty. I've given the ink another stir just before I use it to make sure we've got good even distribution. Lay your mayor rod in handy. And we'll get a bit of ink ready to go on that. Put your ink across. And then pull the bar down, don't roll it. And then leave it to dry and you get a beautiful coat on that every time. Okay, so just to run through that one more time, a nice flat surface, bit of tempered glass works really well, hard and flat. You get your substrate, whatever that happens to be. I'm using this stuff, obviously, which is HDPE. Attach that to your flat surface. You might use uh, a different material, it's totally up to you, but I'm using that. Put my gloves on so I don't get too inky, because I'm always washing my hands. You may a rod nice and ready. Remember, the thickness of the film is related to the wire diameter. It's half the wire diameter. And then the solid content. And you can change that thickness by changing the wire diameter. So clearly, a larger diameter wire is going to give you a thicker film. A thinner diameter wire will give you a thinner film. So changing that wire diameter changes the film thickness. But the key of it is it's repeatable again and again and again. So we've got some ink in our syringe. we put a bit of ink on the... Substrate. Don't roll the bar, draw the bar. And there we go, a beautiful coat. 
And here's the one that we did uh, earlier. As you can see, it's nice and shiny. And then we'll leave that to dry properly. And that's finished. So very easy to do. Now, I did look at the price of these things, and they're about $250 to buy, which I thought was crazy. So that's how you go about making one. We might actually start making these and sell them on the shop. We haven't decided on that or not. I guess it depends how much call there is for it, really, and how much time we have. But they're really easy to make at home yourself, and they do a beautiful, beautiful job. So I hope that was of interest to you, and thank you very much for watching.